when you uh, when, when you play good football teams on the road, um, some things you want to do. I mean, one, you know, got to protect the football, got to win the turnover ratio. It's like that always, but especially on the road, uh, you need to be able to run the football. Uh, you need to be able to stop the run, um, and then sustain drives. Um, we didn't. You, you need to start fast too. We didn't start fast, but we kind of settled down a little bit uh, in the second quarter. You know, defensively, we let them have that first drive where they scored. After that, didn't score any more. Uh, shut them out the second quarter. Uh, defensively, the third quarter really hurt us. Um, we have a, haven't have been a third and long situation, and uh, you know, a typical pass that should have been. Um, a completion for less than a first down end up being, a, you know, them getting a touchdown uh, put us on the heels a little bit. Uh, and then the next drive, you know, they had two drives in the, in the third quarter and scored touchdowns on both of them. Really hurt us. Offensively in that um, second half, we didn't punt in the second half uh, and only had that one drive, of course, in the third quarter. But the negative part is when you're Offensively, when you're down there six times in the red zone, we can't convert one time. Um, costly penalties, you know, the things that uh, don't allow you to win the game. It's kind of as simple as that. Um, a lot was asked about the quarterback position. Uh, you know, we need to protect the football better. I mean, at interception, we can't make it. Um, and again, I mentioned some of those penalties, but, uh, you know, Davis Mills, uh, I mean, again, he'll tell you he needs to play better like all of us need to do a better job. And eventually we will. Take your question. In regards to starting slow, I know you guys want to establish a run. Has there been – how much consideration has been given to um, throwing to help set up the run? Because a lot of teams are clearly, like, knowing that you guys want to set up the run and kind of beat you to the punch. You say throwing it to set up the run? You're talking about the first play of the game? No, no, no. I'm no, I'm talking about the first play of the game. Uh, we threw the ball to set up the run. You just got to, we had a favorable play to start the game off. We kind of missed the throw. Um, yeah, there's, I mean, when we say we're a running team, it's just not, hey, run, run, run. You need to be able to mix the pass up in there quite a bit. And we had our, our opportunities yesterday, but we absolutely need to be able to do that. When you look back at the film, what did you identify as the reason in, in a lot of the earlier plays in the first half, um, a lot of the passes being before the sticks? Oh, I can't. I mean, that would be hard to just say. I mean, there's different things on, on different plays. Um, we were a little short on the sticks on some of them. And some of them, we, we missed the throw. Um, it's kind of as simple as that. I mean, I, I thought I thought we did mix it up fairly well. Um, Damon was still able to, for the most part, get his carries, uh, not as much. He had one running back that gets, you know, almost 40 carries. Another one gets almost 20. Um, that can kind of dictate a little bit. But, um, again, we had our opportunities. I'm going to go back down. Our game plan that we had allowed us to get down in the red zone six times. Got to be able to capitalize down there. Got to do a better job once we get down there. But that is saying an awful lot to be able to get in those positions. Other side of the football, when they, they got down there two times, we weren't able to stop them. Was talking about a, a Justin, you all made a free hitter. You said in the whole the first half. What were some of the things you guys did to adapt to? Oh, all right. we'll That's good. Who said that, Damon? That's good. But teams always have a free hitter. Um, you know, most, most of the runs that, that have gone for long yardage on the defensive side, we have a free hitter. Uh, most uh, teams that are trying to stop the run can have a free hitter at all times. And a lot of times it's just left, left up to the running back to make one guy miss. So that's just normal right there throughout. Teams are going to gang up on us and, uh, and make us throw the ball uh, and try to do whatever they need to do to stop the run. Um, it was brought up about passing the ball to set up the run. In the last three weeks, Davis is averaging 47 yards and passing in the first half and then in two of those games he threw for less than 40 yards what is it going to take to get him going early to get to get him there's a lot of numbers you threw out there I don't have them memorized like that um, we, we have a balanced attack and we try to run I'm going back to the first play of the game we try to run we try to pass we mix it up 
On what has happened back there, I really don't know. I, I just know of how we finish up the game. We, we didn't punt the ball in the second half, and we had our opportunities. We're down in the red zone six times. So whatever we're doing, if we continue to do that and convert on some of those, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Lovey, you mentioned yesterday that you thought it's not time to bench Mills and that the position is different than others. Can you explain why that position is different? What no, let me, let me, well, because you, you guys keep asking me about that position, that's all we want to talk about. Davis Mills had an interception yesterday, like a lot of quarterbacks in NFL did. And without going over critiquing every little bit, we look at, we evaluate everything that every position does quarterback, some of the positions, you don't just, we never rotate them. If there's a position where you don't rotate a guy, you're going to let that guy play a little bit longer. At, at a, and it's like that for other positions too. Our linebackers, we don't, uh, some of the positions we don't substitute an awful lot. Some of our offensive linemen, it's no more than that. But we evaluate everybody. And right now, what I said yesterday, right after the game, and what I'm saying now, that we don't think that the play right now, just Davis Mills' play, says all of our problems. Let's just get Davis out of there and everything's okay. We're going to keep working on a lot of different things. That's what I said yesterday. That's what I'm saying today. You were mentioning teams are ganging up on you and making you throw the ball. The confidence in Davis to do that, where does that confidence come from and what do you see that he's able to do? Because he gives us our best chance to win. The confidence comes in that. Since he's our starting quarterback, we're going to have to be able to do that. We completed some balls yesterday. And as I said, we didn't punt the ball the second half. So there's some good things that we're able to do, too. And when I say teams are ganging up, I, I mean, that's what all teams do. We're all trying to gang up on the run and make your pass for the most part. I didn't know that I said anything that was that really enlightened someone on that comment. On the defense side of the ball, Coach, can you talk about the play of Jerry Hughes? And was this something that you all expected him? And how, how are you expecting him to play coming into the season? I we liked him a lot, you know, and uh, you know, this is Jerry's uh, third team that he's been on, and uh, he's uh, played, you know, quite a few years. Um, again, we liked everything about him, and not just him meeting him, the person, but his play on video. Uh, Jock Cesare, our defensive line coach, had worked with him his last stop. All those things said, yeah, we want him here. It's always good to bring a local guy back home. All those things. But his play has been outstanding every game. Uh, there's a certain level of play. He's not going to make every tackle, every play, but he's going to he's going to be someone that teams have to keep take notice of. And um, you know, a, a guy when I'm talking about, he's been playing this long, and we have a lot of young players playing. They need to see guys like Jerry Hughes, you know, that are just nonstop every snap. Um, we'd be undefeated if everybody was playing. We were all doing our job as well as Jerry is doing his. With uh, Jalen Petrie, after the, uh, this tackle, he's watching something. Of course, you feel like that's a correct moment when a young player misses, makes a mistake, obviously wants to make the play, mm -hmm. and then you get him back out there. Just your thoughts on Jalen? Well, it has to be a correctable thing because uh, Jalen would be the first guy to tell you he's missed too many tackles. He's too good a football player. And there are some things that can help him. In that situation, first off, he was we had a you know we had a blitz on, man coverage. He was guarding, uh, you know, the slot guy. It was too far off of him first. Too much space in between, and uh, there are some, uh, you know, as a defender, there are some positions you put in where maybe zone coverage, and we have a guy that's take a shot on their leverage side because they know they have their teammate there. Then there's some situations where it's man coverage. When you're maybe the last guy that could possibly get it down, you have to make a more secure tackle. So a lot of things that kind of goes into it. Yesterday was one of those situations where we, you know, third and long, we needed to just make a, sec a secure tackle. But after he missed it, we, we should have a, another wave of defense, a, a safety. We, it's not like it was a zero coverage blitz. And we had other. Kristen Harris had a chance to get him down. We had a couple of other players that had an opportunity to. Unfortunate play where we could have, you know, stopped momentum, you know, early in that third quarter. You know, it might have been a different outcome too. With that being said, Coach, you had 
your, your rookies, some of your rookies made some mistakes on yesterday that stood out in the game. Um, do you pull them to the side or, or do you bring them in? And like Aaron said, that teachable moment for all of them, not just Jalen Petrie, but for the other ones too. It's when you're a rookie in this league, there are teachable moments daily. Pulling men, hugging them, talking to them, coaching them throughout. Throughout the course of a game, yes. Jalen wasn't the only rookie. Um, every rookie to, to a man did something that we need to clean up yesterday. And, yeah, as coaches, we're always doing that. It's not like we're kicking them out of the family, making them change their last name, anything like that. But we are. Uh, when you deal with young players, it's going to be moments like that. You want the moments to just be less and less each week, and hopefully now that we're in the he second half of the season, that that'll be the case. You guys have played well in the second quarter on defense. That You are talking about that blitz there. Was that kind of game situation, being down 14-3, trying to make something happen? In the, in the second quarter or the third? The third the uh, um, well, no, that was just a typical third and long situation. Brooks and we had a blitz call. We thought we could uh, get some pressure. We did get good pressure on that one, but great play uh, by Jones to get the ball out of there. And, uh, you know, you have a blitz, and they catch about – some of you were asked – someone asked early about short of the third down marker a little bit. That was a, a play that was caught short of the, of the first down marker. It's got to be able to get them down in those situations, and, and the punt team comes on. Mike, uh, John Bernard's been on IR, but he's missed the four games. He's We've seen him out of practice with the team and all. Do you expect that he might be coming back? Uh, we hope. I don't know exactly how long. I mean, right now where we are, when you're close, you need all of your, you know, your guys back. You know, it's good to get uh, Brandon back in the game plan. Cooks back in the game plan last week. It was it was good to get Nico uh, back into the game plan uh, last this yesterday's games. Uh, Malik Collins, all those guys, but. To get Jonathan back, he's one of our guys too. I don't know exactly how long it'll be, but uh, there'll be a spot for him when he gets back. What do you think been the biggest issue in uh, fourth quarter? So right now, you guys are averaging like about three points in the fourth quarter throughout the season. What do you think has been like the biggest issue in terms of being able? I wish. Again, I I know I'm the head coach. I'm supposed to be able to tell you, hey, this is a, uh, the the reason why. Um, but I, I just think if we continue, you know, if we if we were just you know, no production, I would really be concerned. I just look at yesterday, you know, we were down there. Uh, that word finish has been used an awful lot, but uh, that's the case. And, um, you know, untimely penalties, uh, we, we are close. And don't know exactly what the reason is, but we're getting another opportunity. Uh, that's a good thing about, you know, where we are in our football season. You know, the uh, commanders are coming in. We get a chance. They got a chance to see us up close and personal uh, yesterday. Um, excited about seeing them. Uh, excited about coming back home. You know, when you, again, when you go on the road and you lose a tough one like that, you do want to come back home. And hopefully we'll, con you know, correct some of those things this week. Coach, you mentioned finishing. Can, can you take us through, like, some things that you and the staff are doing, uh, working with not just the younger players, but just your team? on a weekly basis to teach them how to finish a game, how to win. Uh, we, we just have a routine that we go through that we've been doing forever, like most teams. Just not one thing. Hey, guys, we hadn't finished. Do this to finish. No, it's just going through a practice uh, the best you can right up until the last play. It's no more than that. We all see the clock. You need to play your best ball at the end. It's as simple as that. Uh, defensively yesterday, uh, they didn't score in the fourth quarter. Uh, offensively yesterday, we were down there quite a bit. Now just being able to complete the play uh, at the end. But it's just not, hey, just do this and we finish. It's, it's a little bit bigger than that. Talk about, Talk about the production of um, Jordan Aikens and him taking advantage of the opportunities he gets. Uh, good, good question. Um, you know, there's a, things that's happening. We're, you know, seeing things like Oboe on the defensive side uh, of the, you know, of the field at the defensive end position. Uh, did a lot of good things yesterday from start to finish. Uh, Jordan Aikens, though, seemed like from the moment we picked him up off of waivers or whatever that was, uh, the guy just made play after play. He's a tough matchup. 
tough matchup size-wise for a safety or a linebacker. And um, just what he's been able to do. Uh, yesterday, every time we threw the ball, it seemed like he was able to make some type of big play, which we could have gotten that you know one of those in that you know long one into the end zone on it. But uh, he's just a good, productive football player that we need to keep in the game plan and really need to get into the game plan even more. Thanks, guys. Thank you.